All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video with Fat Phil, and we are going to be ranking the Journey Guide as of April 2023. I did one of these back in, I don't know, it's been a couple of months, and I want to kind of go back through. We've got some new updates, and I definitely am better at these lists, I would say, than when I first did that, so let's dive right into our video, guys. We're going to look at the Journey Guide, and I just want to make a few notes about the Journey Guide and how we're ranking this. Unlike the traditional lists I've done where we're ranking characters that are pilots, galactic legend wrecks, and giving them a lot more importance. With journey guide characters, these are all important characters. They're all very good. Some of them are, in fact, galactic legend requirements. A lot of these guys are. For the ones that aren't necessarily galactic legend requirements, they seem to have a lot more, you know, viability in terms of PvP, PvE, that if you could only have that specific character, right, one versus the other, like take, for example, Afra compared to, say, C-3PO. If you could only have one of them, you'd probably want Dr. Afra, but you want C-3PO because he's, you know, a wreck. So we're going to kind of rate this list in order of how, you know, yes, they're important, but really they're all good characters. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below. Let's dive in. Come on now. Let's, let's get in here. So at the bottom is BB-8. I love BB-8, and this is not a knock at saying he's a bad character. BB-8's fantastic. He's got a lot of good synergy. The reason he's down at the bottom is because it takes first order characters to unlock him. And so for a lot of players you're, who rush Supreme Leader Kylo Ren, you have this BB-8 sitting at level 1 gear gear 1 for the longest time. And it, and that's okay, right? Like you weren't intending to get BB-8. So he's a really good character. He's required for Rey, Galactic Legends Rey. Um, the other thing with BB-8 that I don't think people realize, he suits in really well with Shorty droids, General Grievous droids. There's a lot of things you can do to use him. I do love him, but I just, with the First Order Rex, he's down low. All right, next is JTR, and again, this is a character that the requirements to get her are mostly terrible, that BB-8 is the best one of those requirements. You get Stick Ray and OG Finn, but the with this, it's one of those situations where because it's an easier event to get through, the gear threshold, you don't really, you're not really putting any significant gear levels on those characters, and so in my personal opinion, it kind of devalues JTR. The other thing with her that, it's, she's so team dependent. Um, you know, I throw her on defense because I have a team that I can kind of use with her, but overall, just an okay character. Nothing that I would be writing home about by any stretch of the imagination. R2-D2 is a step above them. Yes, he, he requires Empire like BB-8. The difference is R2-D2 does lead you towards Commander Luke Skywalker, and you're probably building Rebels at the same time that you're building Empire a lot of times, and so you'll find ways to use R2-D2 earlier on than, say, JTR. So I do really love R2-D2. He's a fantastic plug-and-play. I'd actually give him a little bit more plug-and-play viability than, say, BB-8, simply because he's got the three tags across Galactic Republic, Resistance, and Rebels. And then just some of his mechanics, I think, fit really nicely with them, that BB-8 kind of solely resistance and droids, whereas, you know, R2 can also wear that droid hat. So just a little bit more plug and play out of R2-D2 and a lot more early game viability. All right, Dr. Afra is down here, and this is not saying that she's not a good character. I think she was very Datacron dependent, and I think that will continue to be the case for her, that very Omicron and Datacron dependent the biggest knock on her, she's kind of out on her own. That her requirements aren't going to lead you in any specific way. But once you get her, she's very good. It's just she's not something that you unlock her and then, like, you've got, you know, you got to build some other things along up with her dark side droids, which you get two of them with her Rex, but then you've got to build some other teams. I just, I really think that she's a very late game farm. And so early game, I kind of devalued her to say that, you know, she's not something that I personally would be rushing right away because of how out on her own she kind of is. Grandmaster Yoda's next. The He's very easy to get. He's a fantastic legendary. I do love Grandmaster Yoda. Very, very plug and play. The thing with him is that he really shines later. That the Jedi you can use to complete this mission, right? Like his legendary event is so easy that you don't really have a team that you're going to be taking advantage of with him for a little bit. That as you get later down the road, he really shines. But at that time that you're unlocking him a lot of times, you don't have that fantastic team ready to go. I think he's one that shine that relic levels are important. Not that he can't be useful earlier, 
but he's a little bit expensive to get up and running at that point. So for me, kind of dropped him down on the list. Baskar Armor Mando is next, you know, Grogu's dad, right? Spoilers. Uh, but the, the thing with Baskar Armor Mando for me, he's a pilot for the executor, which is the best thing about him. He is very, like, I do want to say I love Baskar Armor Mando. I think that he definitely is one of those characters who probably gets a little bit too much hate for how good he is. You saying hello, buddy? You saying hello? Everybody's going to get to see your face on the camera here. So we take a quick pip and break. Uh, but, you know, with Best Armor Mando, buddy, come on now. Come on, Pip. The I think what's keeping him back for me, he doesn't have a solid team. He needs those relics to kind of get the best out of his team. You could at least have a team with him built, but it's a little bit, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, but otherwise, I mean, once you get that Razor Crest and you get the Executor, he's amazing. It's just outside of that, not a ton of uses early. Grand Admiral Thrawn, he's still a great tune, you know, very good early on. I still think Phoenix is probably worth getting early on simply because they get you Thrawn. He's got the capital ship. Where I think he's lost some value, in my personal opinion, is when they took Fracture away from Galactic Legends. I think that's kind of knocked him down in my list. He's, you know... His home was for a long time was with Emperor Palpatine, but now that Mara Jade's in the game, I think he's kind of at times booted out of there so you can use Starkiller with that team. So then you're kind of using him with Lord Vader, which is okay, but, you know, it, it's, it's six in one hand, half dozen in the other. He's still good early, but there's some better characters, I think, that have bigger, wider impacts, like Emperor Palpatine. Now, he is missing a hand, right? He's missing, not, not physically, but... He's missing his Emperor's, he's missing the Emperor's hand. He needs Mara Jade at this point. You, and I say that because we're assuming you're taking Darth Vader and using Darth Vader as a solo because that's the smartest thing to do in a GAC situation. So because you're doing that, Palpatine definitely would lose value if you don't have Mara Jade to kind of keep that turn meter train going. But otherwise, he is so good. His leadership is amazing. Even at low gear, you put some decent speed mods on him and Mara Jade, and they just they do really, really good things. I do love Palpatine, but I think he's probably where he belongs on this list. Padme is a step above Grant. You know, I call him Papa Palp, right? Uh, so she's a step above him. I With Padme, what's holding her from being higher is that her team is expensive. The... The Jedi Knight, Anakin, Ahsoka, General Kenobi, and then, you know, that fifth slot, I always say, is kind of up for up in the air for so many different reasons. She's, it's just expensive. There's some Zetas involved there. They definitely, again, all teams get better with Relics, but I definitely think Padme's team is one of those that, when they have Relics, the amount of counters decreases drastically. That before Relics, it's a lot, there's some ways that you can get around that team, that when you put them on, they definitely just go... Like like the Palpatine Mara Jade team, they obviously get better with Relics, but you can still use them to really good effect. You can still punch up with them without the gear and Relics. I don't think with Padme that's as much of the case. You're not going to be able to really punch up without all that additional investment like you could say with this team. So, you know, her team is expensive. I don't know if you guys can hear my cats making all this noise. I do apologize. All right, Commander Luke above Padme, he, you know, it binds all things, right? He binds the Rebel team together. The uh, He's a fantastic, or, you know, early game leader. As you get his team, he gets better and better and better. What's holding him back from being higher is that he is very team dependent, that I always say that he's the weakest member of his team, but you put him as this rebel leader for so many different characters and they still are really good at that team. As soon as you get some of those members, it just takes off and that he's the importance of it. You know, similar to Padme, right? That Padme is this character that when she's leading them, you know, you could argue that she's the weakest member because when she's not in the leadership slot, she loses a lot of viability. With Commander Luke though, you're never not using him as the lead. Like, that's just the way he is. He's that important. I really love Luke. Maybe I'm a little bit biased there. All right, C-3PO is a step above Luke only because he's got the multiple tags like R2-D2. The, the Ewoks are brutal. That is a brutal requirement. You know, that event is one of the worst events in the game. 
What I love about C-3PO, he's got, you know, he fits into so many different teams. Like you throw him with Padme and that can take away that Empire counter very easily because when he's giving out that protection up, Padme's ability says, hey, you can't be debuffed when you have protection up. So I think that's why I have C-3PO a little bit higher than Luke is he's got that ability to go into any of those teams that you're using. So I really love C-3PO for that reason. Um... I think he makes any team he's in significantly better. I get, you know, with the synergy. Jedi Knight Revan is above C-3PO. He's, I love Jedi Knight Revan. Jed, he is my only uh, light side Old Republic relic. I The biggest thing with him, he's Zeta intensive. He really needs all three of those Zetas, which is pretty brutal, right? That is a, that's a lot of investment to do, but it just shows you how good he is, that he's definitely worth all those Zetas. Again, he kind of takes, you know, when you get Jedi Knight Revan, that's when Grandmaster Yoda really comes into the forefray of how good he is. There's a lot of characters that go into the Jedi Knight Revan team, just a really, really solid Jedi leader, even late game, really solid character. I love Jedi Knight Revan. I think that him being where he is here shows you just how much value he brings to your roster. We've got Darth, Mal or Darth Revan next above Jedi Knight Revan. He's not as Zeta intensive. That's one of the things that I think Darth Revan Zetas are not nearly as important as Jedi Knight Revan Zetas are. The thing with Je Darth Revan that I can't really have him that much higher is that he's going to move up with Malak. That as you get Malak, Darth Revan's importance, you know, drastically increases. The I, I kind of kept him a little bit lower because Darth Malgus is kind of taking over that leadership slot at times. And and not saying that that's a bad thing, right? Because Darth Revan is still in that squad. But, you know, the as you guys have heard me say before, that the Darth Revan Sith Empire team is a better team, but Jedi Knight Revan is a better character. So there's not much separating these two, but I did want to put Darth Revan higher because I think early players will struggle more with a Darth Revan team than a Jedi Knight Revan team. Just, just my personal opinion on that. General Skywalker, you guys will notice that he's kind of down a little bit farther than I think people would have realized. I mean, he's fantastic, right? We've got to recognize how good that General Skywalker team is, but he needs his entire 501st. And that's a lot of extra additional investing on top of the Galactic Republic team you built for Phase 2 and the Separatist team that you're going to build for Phase 4. So the way I kind of see General Skywalker there. He needs that 501st, which is a lot of additional investing to do compared to some other characters where when you unlock them, they're kind of ready to go or they've got some of the characters you use with them. He he needs a lot of extra work out after his event or takes you longer to get him because you did work before his event. So I felt that, that need, he needs to lose some of that value, but he is probably the best He's one of the best, I'll say he's the best non-Omicron, non-Galactic Legend team in the game. I think that's a fair statement that there's, you know, you take Omicrons out of this, out of the equation, and he is probably the all-around best non-Galactic Legend team in the game. Uh, you know, without, you know, because Omicrons change everything, but I think if you take Omicrons out, you look at all the teams, I think the 501st is probably the best team without Omicrons in the game. I and I'm going to exclude Reva from that list as well because I count her as a Galactic Legend. So there we go. All right, next you've got Chewbacca and Han Solo. The Han Solo is there for the Millennium Falcon. But Chewbacca is there. You need Bounty Hunters to unlock him. Fantastic faction. Chewbacca slots right into the Commander Luke Skywalker. And then those same Bounty Hunters are needed for the Millennium Falcon, which is crewed by Han and Chewie. They are so good. They complete, you know, the Millennium Falcon lifts the Rebel fleet, whether it's Profundity or Home One, significantly. They take the CLS team, you know, Chewbacca, when you put him into that CLS team, let's say you have, you know, Commander Luke, C-3PO, 3PO and Chewie, Han Solo, and you don't have Chewbacca yet. The second you get Chewbacca, that team just transforms into something completely different. And it's noticeable, right? It's one of the most noticeable differences in accounts in squads that when you unlock Chewbacca how much better that team becomes and again remember he's not a, and that's not a leadership that oh you know how much better your clones get when they're under General Skywalker versus Shock T sure right that's gonna happen 
but you talk about the impact Chewbacca has in and out of a CLS team, and it's huge. I really love Chewbacca. I think he's a fantastic, fantastic character. So we got Starkiller a step above, like, Chewie. Um, this is really because he, there's, yes, there's Omicrons involved, right? 100%. But with those Omicrons, he turns into a beast. I do love Starkiller a lot, and I think he's only getting more and more important with all these new characters that have come into the game. The biggest thing for me, yes, it's three Omicrons plus characters. And if you want to use them in Territory Wars, there's additional things you need to do. But it seems like they've given us the tools to make Starkiller teams tick. And I love that. I think that he's, you know, his requirements are all very good characters that they're not, they don't make a team, right? Like Mara Jade, you can at least use with him, right? Because you'll run like Emperor Palpatine, Mara Jade, Starkiller, and then you're going to pick a Jedi and then a light side online force user. But like Darth Talon goes with Sith, you know, with any Sith team. Dash Rendar, Smugglers, he's kind of that oddball, but the Outrider's a good ship. And you've got Kyle Katarn, who's a rebel fighter, a Jedi, and he's got the Raven's Claw. They're all pretty, you know, good requirements. There's not any of those that you kind of slouch at. So I really wanted to make Starkiller a, yes, this is a good character, because there's just so many good things that come from him. All right, next we have Grand Inquisitor. And look, yes, he is expensive. Let's not pretend that Inquisitors are not expensive. But he lifts that faction into something that they are just, they go from a team that, you know, super weenie hut junior to a, a whole new level. They're also the characters you need for Reva. I, I struggled with where to put Grand Inquisitor, but I do like him where he is because the moment you unlock Grand Inquisitor, you have the characters to fully make that team work that, you know, I, and that to me is invaluable. I think that's one of the things that makes that sets him apart from like a star killer that or even like Chewbacca you could have bounty hunters get Chewie and not have commander Luke and Han built up but with Grand Inquisitor you have his team built up the moment you unlock him and that is really real like his entire team and that's really important to me he is a pilot as well he's got this scythe which is a fantastic ship so just a lot of really good things that come from Grand Inquisitor that I think he really does belong on this list they're, that team is capable of beating a lot of good stuff. And they always seem to make sure that Datacrons help our Inquisitors. So we've got to gotta have them on that list, right? All right, we got the jaw drop here. Malak is very high on this list. And the reason I have Malak so high, he's not very expensive to get in terms of gear you need to outlay. Like there's maybe one, I, I did it with one relic in my squad. I had a relic, I think I had relic Jedi Knight Revan and everybody else was below relic levels when I did this event the first time and got it done. So it's not expensive to get him. You're going to use him with Darth Revan and Bastila Shan and like, and then you could throw HK-47 in there, Sith Marauder, Darth Town. There's so many characters you can throw in that Sith team that I, they just, you know, you've got the team, you've got his best parts basically ready to go. He's a fantastic solo. And I think when I compare General Skywalker and Malak, before Relics, I think Malak's a better character than General Skywalker. With Relics, I think General Skywalker starts to become a little bit more of a force to be reckoned with. Uh, but Malak is a, is a solo king, right? That You don't have to use Darth Revan and Bastila with him. You can use him solo to good effect. I just There's a lot of good things with Malak, and I think he's much more obtainable to get early on. And that's why I have him so high on the list. All right, the, the conflict within, right? You know, I can feel the conflict. You can feel the conflict within me of where I have Jedi Knight Luke here. And the, you know, there's so many good things about Jedi Knight Luke. His requirements are amazing, right? Because obviously, you guys knew it was coming. Wampa is one of the requirements for Jedi Knight Luke. Wampa is king. If you guys want to see Wampa hit Relegate live on stream, all you need to do, get this channel to 5,000 subscribers. When we hit 5,000, Wampa will hit Relegate on a special live stream. I will make sure that's out of time for everybody. So we can all join in on the fun. Remember guys, Wampa may not be a legendary character, but he's legendary in our hearts because he is our king. All right, let's get back into our list with Jedi Knight Luke here. So with Jedi Knight Luke, what I think is that one of the most important parts of him is that he's going to give you the ability to pivot into multiple galactic legend farms. The requirements for him are, yes, they're steep, but they're all pretty decent in terms of you know, even like Rolo, Captain Han, and Lando, 
that's a team. Those are characters that you can kind of put together and make your own. Um, you know, I loved, I love that his character, his kit, there's so much he brings to the table in terms of as a Jedi and even as a, you know, like, I, like I should say as a leader and a squad member, right? That's maybe the better way to say that. There's so much he brings to the table as a leader and squad member that you can't not have him high on this list. So the final two slots, I'm going to kind of spoil it right now. So I have profundity below executor and I kind of have been flipping back and forth between these two. And what led me to profundity being second is the recent changes to the new ships that have come into play, the Interceptor, the Scythe, have made the countering profundity much more reasonable. I feel I have, if I see profundity on defense, I know that I have a much better chance of beating that than I ever did the Executor. Even with the First Order, there's still so many variables that can go wrong that with profundity, there's a lot less RNG involved in my personal opinion. The other thing with this is that Executor is a ship that is easier to get, right? The requirements are much less steep. You know, the Relic 9 for Rogue One, and then the characters even to get the profundity are a lot more on their own, like Afra, comparative to, say, Admiral Piet and Executor, right, where you're building bounty hunters and Empire characters. The, I, the reason profundity needs to be where it is is because that ship is so good. Let's not pretend that that ship isn't amazing, Right? It's, these are two almost galactic legend level things. Like These are the two parts of... Like with that journey guide, when we go back into the journey guide, right? and this is a good maybe way to kind of... You know, you see how tier five, you've got these three characters. And honestly, those three characters, there's not a lot separating them. But then the jump from even like Jedi Knight Luke to Executor is massive. Like that is the... That is a huge jump. You know, when I said that all these characters are pretty close together, I feel very confident in saying that until you get to these last two where they're just in a tier above. Like, I really think that they belong in the Galactic Legends area or in a tier six, that they they need to be significant. They're significantly better. And, you know, I think that they deserve all that credit for what they do for your, not just like, like, fleet arena ranking but GAC territory wars territory battles everything those two are just so important the executor I think is a little bit better defensively in that I think the AI just doesn't make nearly as many I don't want to call it mistakes but like there's less manual work that needs to be done on a executor fleet that with the profundity at times the AI doesn't always make the best decision possible and that has led me to be able to win against that fleet a lot more often than an executor. So that's just my personal opinion, guys. But that's the list. I'm kind of curious to see what you guys think. And if you agree with where I rated characters, again, I took into consideration, yes, how good they are, but also what else do you need for them? Um, I think that this list is very good. You know, I feel confident about it. I love all these characters. Again, they're all so good. Like when you look at their faction rankings, they're all going to be pretty high on their own list. Um, you know, I, there's not one of these characters that I'm not using regularly. Like I, and I say that even like, you know, you go down to my JTR and my, um, BB-8 R2-D2, I am using them regularly still. Even my gear 12 BB-8 still sees use every single GAC. So, you know, that's just something that I want to make very well known for you guys that, and even like, I'll say this, I said this last time too that BB-8, JTR, and R2-D2 make a very good team. They, for 3v3, 5v5, there's some other random resistance characters in there, but those three form a very good team. So I'm going to leave it at that, guys. Let me know what your thoughts are down below. As always, smash that subscribe button, leave likes, leave comments, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.